Hello, I'm Ollie. You killed my father. Prepare to die. So, firstly, don't worry, you don't actually have to prepare to die. And also, don't worry, my dad is absolutely fine. Um, although a bit cheesed off at the moment because he's about to move house. So he's having to get rid of some of his books because he's, he's not going to have enough room for them in his new house. Um, anyway, hopefully you recognise that uh, slightly different version of my intro um, as being a reference to The Princess Bride. And if you do know The Princess Bride, you probably know it from the movie version, which came out in 1987 um, and is much beloved. So I first saw it uh, on video not long after it came out and I've watched it a fair few times since then, including quite recently with my son, um, who also loved it. So a really wonderful film, a wonderful mix of, of comedy and adventure uh, and indeed romance. Um, but the film is based on a book. So the book came out in 1973, um, written also by William Goldman, um, and is a really interesting read if you come to it knowing the movie because of the differences. Um, but before I start talking about it, I wanted to just uh, I, I wanted to just moan a bit about an interesting fact that I discovered when I when I was looking into William Goldman as a writer. So Goldman obviously is very very well known as a screenwriter. So wrote, wrote Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, wrote the screenplay for the movie Misery, uh, wrote All the President's Men. So you know wrote has, has written some really really big famous, influential, well-respected movies, uh, but also wrote a lot of novels. So he published 16 novels in his lifetime, The Princess Bride being one of them. Um, and, um, you know, he's a bit, you know, he's a big name in screenwriting and based on The Princess Bride, which is the only book I've read by him, he's a good novelist as well. Now, as things stand, um, just having a quick glance um, online before filming this, only three of his books are still in print in the UK, which for someone who's as big a name as he is, and that's, sorry, that's three of his novels, obviously some of his books around screenwriting and things like that, which is a very well known, um, are still in print. But yeah, only three of his novels appear to still be in print. The Princess Bride being one of them, um, which seems a terrible shame. And I don't understand why it is that big authors like that, you know, people who were, who were big names in their day, how their books have fallen out of print in you know in the modern day when it's so quick and cheap and easy for publishers to publish publish thing on kindle, things on kindle anyway i digress let me talk about the book uh, so the story is effectively the same as the story of the movie so it is a romantic adventure um, about a couple who are in love who get separated um uh, buttercup who's the who, who's the the female half of the couple um ends up um being kind of forced to marry this evil prince um, and Wesley um, who's her beloved um, is trying to rescue her from that and woven into that you get a, a kind of supporting cast of wonderful characters um, so it's a very very funny story um, but just really engaging and engrossing and amusing as well and and that part of the story is very very similar in the book to what's in the film one of the big differences is there's a there's a place in the, in the book called the Zoo of Death, um, which plays a big part in the book, um, which is kind of removed from the film, um, which is a shame because uh, because <laughs> it's a really entertaining sequence. Um, but aside from that, the the two are very very similar, and you will recognise you know right down to individual lines of dialogue and things like that. If you've seen the film, you'll you'll get those in the book. Where there's a big difference is in the, the stuff surrounding the story. So if you've seen the film, you'll remember the framing for the for the film is um, that there's this young boy who's who's ill in bed and his grandfather reads him this story, the story of the Princess Bride, and, and reads it as a um, as a as a story that you know is, is beloved by him from his own childhood. Um, and the kid's kind of reluctant at first, but gradually gets swept up in it. So that's the kind of framing for the film. Um, the book is completely different in that framing, but but really interesting um, and entertaining. So in the book, William Goldman, as a child, is ill in bed, as the, as the, the young boy character in the film is. Um, and his dad reads him this story of The Princess Bride. Um, and when he... When, 
Goldman grows up and is an adult and has a son of his own, he buys a copy of uh, The Princess Bride for his son's birthday and is really keen for his son to read it. Um, and when his son reads it, um, he, he can't get past the first chapter. He says it's too boring. And when Goldman looks at the book, he realises that there's all this extra stuff in there detail about the society and and you know that, that kind of thing that his dad skipped over when he was re- when he was reading it to him when he was ill so basically his dad just read the good part um so what goldman decides to do is to um to write an abridgment of the original book the princess bride um which he calls the good parts edition um Now, of course, The Princess Bride is, in fact, a completely fictitious book set in a fictitious country, which uh, in in this book is presented as a real country. uh, So a country called Florin. And and that is one difference, actually, between the book and the film. So the film plays very much like a fantasy film, um, whereas the book in the book, the story of The Princess Bride is much more a kind of historical adventure. So a historical adventure set in this fictional country of Florin um, and written by um, an author called S. Morgenstern. Um, so yes, this uh, this is the good parts version abridged. Um, so what you get is you get much more of that kind of wraparound um, in the book than you do in the film. So there's a really lengthy preface which has... Um, Goldman as a as a screenwriter and he writes he writes it as if it's himself so he writes about a character called William Goldman who's a screenwriter who's away from his family in Hollywood and realizes it's his son's birthday and tries to arrange to get this a copy of the book sent to his son Goldman in the book is a bit of an ass yeah so he's really awful to his son who's overweight um, and he's also constantly being enticed by starlets in Hollywood um, and complains about his wife, you know, who, who he's clearly not particularly fond of. I looked into the details of, of Goldman's own life uh, and the wife uh, in the book is completely different from Goldman's real life wife. Um, and similarly, in, in real life, he didn't have a son. He had two daughters. And apparently the, the stories that you know became The Princess Bride were originally stories that he told, you know, that he made up himself and, and told to his daughters um, when they were young. Um, so you get this wraparound and you also get these nice intersections as, as, as the story progresses where Goldman kind of interjects into the narrative to tell you why he's made particular decisions about the parts of Morgenstern's books that he's cut, uh, Morgenstern's book that he's cut out. So the abridgments he has made, he talks about, you know, why he's made those in the interest of pace and character development and things like that. So it kind of becomes a novel that's about the act of storytelling. And it's really, really interesting as a result of that. It's interesting to read someone, you know, who's such a great storyteller as, as Goldman was, talking about the, the, the art of storytelling. Um, what you also get, and sadly it's not in this paperback edition, but in the Kindle edition I read, which I think is like the 25th or 30th anniversary edition of the book, there's an extra part at the end where Goldman talks about the fact that he's um, there's a sequel. So Morgenstern has written a sequel to The Princess Bride, which is called but- Buttercup's Baby. Um, and Morgenstern really wants to... He gets approached by... Um, lawyers from Florin who are representing Morgenstern's estate um, who who try and persuade him to write um, an abridgment of the the sequel to the book or at least he thinks they're asking that it turns out what they're actually asking him to do is give up the rights to writing that because they want Stephen King to write it and there's a wonderful part in this extra bit at the end of the book where um where Goldman meets Stephen King. So he goes to Maine, he goes to Stephen King's house and Stephen King is raving about the Princess Bride movie and saying what a great movie he thought it was, but then says, oh, unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't like the book very much. And it turns out that Stephen King's family, he's like, you know, he's a descendant of people from Florin um, and um, is, you know, really knows the work of Morgenstern and didn't think that Goldman did a good job in his abridgment. Um, and so King is, is kind of on board for writing this the, the abridgment for this sequel. But you do get um, Goldman's attempt at the first chapter. Um, so it's wonderful that he's kind of continued this 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 fiction about the origins of the book and his role in, in creating the abridgment of it. So I really did think that this is, uh, you know, the... 
the extra stuff, the stuff you get about Goldman and his theories about writing um, and just the humour that he, he interjects into those parts of the book um, are a really, really wonderful addition. So if you know the movie and love the movie, you get the movie in this book, but you also get a whole load of other stuff, which I think definitely makes it worth reading. OK, time for a random book from the shelves. Today's is Dracula's Death, uh, translated by Laszlo Tomasvi. So this is a, a novelisation of a uh, Hungarian silent vampire film um, from 1921, which is a really enjoyable read. Um, I read it a little while ago and absolutely loved it. So, so half of this is a novelisation and half is an essay about kind of the history of the film. The film sadly no longer exists. You know, copies of it are, uh, you know, have all been destroyed um, over the years. But the book, because it was a book, was preserved in like the National Library of Hungary or, so, or something like that. Um, and has now been republished uh, and it's a really really entertaining read so i hope you found that interesting let me know if you're a fan of the princess bride um, and if you are let me know if you've read the book as well as having seen the movie um, and as always thank you very much for watching hope you're safe and well out there hope you're really good stuff and i'll speak to you again very soon cheerio